<laughs> it's that time. Y'all go ahead and turn this up. Welcome to the Just Shelter Podcast. For those that are new to this, it's about to be a good one. Uh, uh. What's up, family? It's your boy Elder. You are tuning into the Just Elder Podcast. The greatest podcast to ever hit the airwaves. I'm super excited because we're about to record the greatest episode I have ever recorded. I say that every time, and I mean it every single time. Before we get started, let me just give a round of applause and thank each and every last person that came out to our eighth in a row Revolutionary Movie Night. Uh, it went down. We are two more weeks before Revolutionary uh, Movie Night is done. For the 2020 year, and we will bring it back in 2021 every summer, June to Labor Day. We have uh, been consistent, and we haven't missed one. Uh, so I'm super excited about that. Uh, thank you for everybody that tuned in to last week's episode, No Limits. No Limit Lessons. Talk about Master P and his amazing empire. Um, but before I dive into this episode, which is a very important one, uh, Keith, man, can we go over the reviews we got? Yeah, we got a review. Um, you know, yours truly, Foxy P. Foxy P. from DC. DC. So we got uh, no limit lessons. It says great episodes with an event greater set of uh, with even greater set of lessons for all of us. I think we've all learned a lesson from Master P. and how he has hustled for his family, his business, his community over the decades. It was good to hear you and your guests share your own stories on success, failure, and the rebounds that have paved your own journey. Episode 57 reminds me of the solid content you cranked out during the early weeks of 2020 in the COVID-19 pandemic. That was a lot of those uh, just Eldritch episodes on that. Um, <clears throat> good info and great advice with a dash of humor. And you're right, Eldritch. Dreams are not options, they are opportunities. I'm so glad that you and Keith turn your dreams into one of the best podcasts in the airwaves. Keep that same energy, fellas. You're winning, and we're all here for it. Claps. Peace. From Foxy P from DC. That's what's up. Appreciate you, Foxy. Appreciate you, Foxy. I know we had a new uh, comment on the iTunes. When that came in? That came in. I know for sure it's new. Um, it came in over the week. Over the weekend. Look on iTunes. I don't get it. I don't be getting, you know what, I don't be getting the, uh. I might have it's two numbers, yeah. What does it say? Here you go. Here you go. All right, so one says, uh, hey, good sister, Thursday. It says. That's your sister? I don't know. It might be. It's a hate <laughs> sister. <laughs> Shout out to my sister if it is. We're about to see. Uh, hey, good sister. I really don't know where to begin. I just want to say that this podcast makes my Uber Eats drives. Yeah, it's my sister. <laughs> <laughs> makes my Uber Eats drives. Shout out to my sister. <laughs> Shout out to my sister, Kelsey. Uh, makes my Uber Eats drives more interesting than ever. I laugh. I agree. I disagree. I sit. I think about some topics of discussion. And how it relates to me or people around me, and I love it. I'm glad to to get used to. I'm glad to see you use your gift that God gave you in a great way. Stay blessed. Keep up the great work. Know that you're making impacts on people's globally. Thank you. If no one told you today, All right, shout out to my sis. Appreciate that, sis. You know, sis we thank you. Sis. Come yeah. back again. <laughs> Is that? I was like, I don't know. But then it says Uber Eats right. Yeah, yeah, that's that's her. She be out there hustling. Uh, let's see. Call me Sugar in the house. Let's see. Sugar in the building. Ooh. Uh, you ain't lying when you say the, I don't know what the rest of that says. Uh, this podcast to me is just what I need in the days and times. Just Elders podcast is powerful, informative, raw, brilliant, and funny as fuck. This podcast definitely is made for everyday people, not just for a specific audience. This podcast hits on past and current facts. Eldridge, Keith, and Mark gives you different points of views along with this special guest that he has on. This is definitely a new listener. Yeah. Shout, shout out, shout out, Mark. Shout out, Mark, in the, <laughs> in the comments. Uh, and the guest he has on. I can't get enough, LOL. And I get hyped when I hear the intro song. And you ready? 
Born, born ready. ready. <laughs> Our motto everyone should live by. Last but not least, in your voice, uh, last but not least, in your voice, love you all. We need y'all and can't wait to see y'all next week. One of your biggest fans, Boss Lady, be blessed, Kings. You have purpose. Thank you. Hello, Shout out to Call Me Sugar. Shout out to Sugar. All right, well, y'all heard the reviews, people. Uh, first of all, brothers, I need y'all to represent. These sisters going hard for us in the reviews. Brothers, I know y'all be listening, too, because y'all text me all the time. Y'all can now review on YouTube as well. Shout out to my YouTube family. Also, the Patreon is live. Uh, if you really want to give us some yeah. love and you want to keep the uh, content going, subscribe to our Patreon page. Let's dive into the episode. So today I'm going to introduce these brothers. <sighs> Super excited about it. This brother right here to my right, your left, is you'll recognize the name. His son has been on the podcast for about four or five times now. My favorite cousin, uh, Troy. This is his father, Troy Wilson the <laughs> First. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Oh, how you feeling, man? Feeling good, feeling good. I, I just want to tell a story why I love this brother. <laughs> um, so... I love him for a couple of reasons, but he changed my life in a way he don't know he changed it. Yeah, yeah, let me get that. Yeah, we got the, the YouTube lights, boy. It's real out here. <laughs> Shit, this ain't no fake production. I'm going to let y'all know. We, <laughs> we got lights in there, big. <laughs> so, uh, look, man, my uncle, man, when I was 12, uh, he came to pick up Jamal from Monroe, and Jamal was uh, – going back to Houston for the summer, and uh, let me come with him. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. Like, it wasn't even a planned trip. I don't remember how it happened. He, oh, just, <laughs> he just let hey, me. Ain't nothing like when your uncle said you can ride, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh. so, so, so not only did he let me go to Houston, I was just supposed to go to Houston. Jamal was scheduled to go to camp, and then uh ended up paying for me to go to the camp, too. Uh, that ch- that camp changed my life. <laughs> now, it was a Christian camp. Wasn't much Christian about it, but it was a great <laughs> camp. <though. laughs> Damn. It was a great camp, though. That was probably one of the best summers of my life, man. We went to camp in Austin, Texas, man. So, like, thank you for that. Uh, also, one of my uncles that put me on Motown music, because that's all we were listening to on the way down to Houston. Um, and the brothers just have always been a huge supporter of mine. My first trip. When I went to uh, Africa, I was calling around because I had an opportunity. And they were like, all you have to do is pay for the flight. Everything else took care of. And uh, I was just calling people like, yo, I need 100 people. I need I need 10 people to give me $100. You know how you raise it up. I called uh, and he was like, see what you can raise. And whatever the balance is, hit me up and I got you. And uh, my aunt, uh, the reason why I got to Africa, and y'all know how much I talk about that. So <laughs> thank you, sir, for being the impactful man you are in my life. Do, do you remember? Uh, do you remember on that trip going to his house? I don't remember that. <laughs> so I went on that trip. I went he, was, to... he was in Nashville, and uh, we went to Nashville first. Yeah. Dang, I don't even remember. See, I thought the first time I met you. <laughs> so, all right, this is my other uncle, right? So, I thought the first time I met you was honestly last year. Oh, no, man. <laughs> no, you went to his house in uh, Nashville. Man. Dang, I didn't even remember that. Dang. <laughs> so, this brother right here, man, he needs no introduction. Um, You've probably seen him. I would argue one of the most influential black men when it comes to love, <laughs> marriage, and relationships. Y'all give it up for my uncle. Y'all know him as the great Pastor Kyle. <laughs> How you doing, sir? I'm excellent, man. I'm excellent. Good to be here with you, boy. Man, it's good to be here with you, too, man. You know, hey, hey we here. We here. We here. We here. We here. We here. So, uh... For those that don't know, uh, Pastor Cal, he is one of the uh, co-hosts of Marriage at First Sight, um, a very intriguing TV show. <laughs> I put it like that. So I didn't know what it was when you told me you asked me to come on the show, right? Because you said, like, you said something interesting to me. You said y'all was struggling with something. Uh, y'all was struggling with finding what here in Atlanta. Black men, good black men. Shit. Black men. To marry. To marry, yeah. Who want to marry, man? And that's why we're having this podcast. Because I'm going to be real with y'all. It's 2020. Yep. Black men don't have very many advantages, 
right? But the one advantage that we do have is our ratios when it comes to us versus women. So a lot of men, a lot of men feel like, why would we take away that advantage? Why do it? Let's let's do a survey real quick in the room. We have one, two, three, four, five, six brothers. Right. How many brothers are married in this room? <laughs> Oh shoot! That's it. That's it. It's One out of six. Damn. That's messed up, man. Hey, look. So my thing is, let, let me be real. Let me for my listeners. Let me be real out there. You know, my parents uh, were married for thirty plus years. Right. Uh, from what I seen, pretty beautiful marriage. It, it, I'm not saying it was perfect, but my parents did a good job at kind of like keeping kids' business, kids' business, grown folk do grown folk stuff. Uh, and I remember they got a divorce. Wow. I remember when they got a divorce, and you know, I guess because they did it at a certain age. Like it was by the time they got a divorce, we were just kind of like, oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Like to me, it was a smooth. It was like the smoothest divorce I'd ever seen. <laughs> right. So like for me, I don't see a beautiful long-term marriage and I don't seen a beautiful divorce. Like we be hanging out my, like in my events, my mom bring her boyfriend, my daddy bring his girlfriend. Like we, you know, it just is what it is. So like why, like today what we want to talk to brothers because there's a lot happening and I'm going to be real. A, a, a big point I want to point out, both of my uncles are pastors and that's really big because we talked about this on our episode called whole music. When we were talking about WAP, we were talking about WAP, you know, uh, Cardi. Did you say whole music? Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good episode. You, got, you can't judge it. Yeah, for I got to go back and look at that. Yeah, I got to look, go look at that. You got to look at it. Whole so, music. Oh, my God. Oh my so, God. So, so, like, but we were saying in the church, I grew up in the church, and the, this is my issue with the church. They tell you, don't do this, don't do that, right. don't have premarital sex, right. and then nobody who's married makes marriage look good in the church mm. in my opinion like the church like okay i'm waiting to have sex but i ain't never seen no married cat just like oh boy <laughs> but, <laughs> but when but, i get home but when i get home girl, <laughs> but we gonna use the oil but it ain't for praying like, oh, so like so you got people that's like why do why be married it's very rare when you see brothers that really talk like you're an exception. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And I, I, I love it. Right. Yeah. Right. You're an exception. But, like, folk also say, yeah, he on TV, though. No, I loved it before TV. I know, but I'm just telling you, this how is this how people going to say it. So, why? In 2020, as a young black man, and I'm going to just say for myself, young black man, I ain't got no kids. I got a job. You know what I'm saying? I got good relationship with my mama. I'm all right looking. You know what I'm saying? Like, like why get married? Why not just be out here and just kick it and have life partners? <laughs> you ready to go? You want this? Man, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay, all right. No, man, but, uh, but for, for real, marriage is like the the building blocks of – I'm going to go here. Okay. Marriage is like the building blocks of a stable society. Okay. You feel me? Okay. So, so when we talk about – why to get married? Why should I get married? Why can't I just stay out here and kick it? Understand this. You can stay out here and kick it. That's your. This is this is America. All right. You right. can do that. Uh, you're a free, you know, moral agent. But the, the, but the thing is, if you want to build a stable society where kids have an idea of what love looks like, what commitment looks like, what stability looks like, there has to be a male female relationship, marriage. That, that stays around for a while. Look at you. You said your own parent. So you had an idea of what uh, a stable marriage looks like. Right. Right? Right. Look how much that contributed to your life. Now, I mean, you ain't married now. You, you, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but as, at least you had that idea I see of, what's, of stability. You know what I mean? That does a lot for kids. That's just one thing right. of what that stability does for kids. Okay? Secondly, if you have a mother and a father raising those kids, you have that child looking at mom and dad, and and the little boy looks at dad with mom, and he learns the kind of father and the kind of husband to be. Mm. He looks at mom and learns the kind of wife he wants to marry. 
That little girl looks at mom and dad and looks at that dad and finds out the kind of man she wants to marry and looks at mom and finds out the kind of wife she wants to be. So Are you feeling me? I, I'm feeling you. Can I push back? You push. Boy, boy, push. Like, so can it happen without it? Can it happen without marriage? Yeah. like well, I, me, I, well you let me ask you, and I can reverse the question, why not marriage? Because you see, I'm I, I I'm not arguing I'm not arguing for the def- in defense of marriage. Right, right. You are you tell me why not marriage? So all right, why not marriage? I mean, the it's I hate to answer a question with a question, <laughs> but it's like why? Like I mean, if we if we can really just enjoy each other, and I, I want you to pull in. Like why have you gotten married when you have gotten married? Like if you could just if you if I'm enjoying your time, we're great. Like we're having great. Like I've had. So many, and, and and I want the brothers just in the room. How many times have y'all heard this? We got married, and then it just switched up. It just changed. What changed? Like, it's like the scary story. It's yeah. like the boogeyman story. It's the monster under the bed. That's like it's, it's the it's the progression of the relationship. It's like now that now that she has the official title of wife, it like things have just. <laughs> Not been ex- as exciting. Things have just changed. I mean, that's that's what I've heard on Sunday. That's, that's what you heard. Yeah. You never said that. No, no, I never said no, that. I mean, yeah, we ain't never been married. married. I ain't never been married. married. Like, because it's like she still was auditioning before marriage, and then it's like, and then like when she got the position, it was just like, I'm cool now. I'm here. Hey, I'm gonna do what you do. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna use a metaphor. It's like this, right? There's a cheetah. And there's a gazelle. Y'all, this is Mark. This talking. is Mark. This is Mark. This is Mark. <laughs> so there's a, a cheetah gazelle. and there's a gazelle. We out here in the safaris of Africa. Let's, I feel like this is about to let's be call bad. It, let's call it. <laughs> it's not, it's not but I'm saying, end okay, it's not, not going to end good. And, and, and nah, check this out. Check this go out. Ahead, go check ahead. this out. The cheetah spots the, the gazelle, gazelle from a far away, and then he ensues on the chase. The chase is the most fun that the cheetah has ever had in his entire life. That's right. what's giving him energy. That's what's making him run fast that's what's making him sweat that's what's making him do all of these different things after he gets the gazelle the chase is over so that metaphor is like if the chase is this is my girlfriend at the time now she's my fiance and then the chase is over at marriage it starts to get a little boring because i don't i no longer am chasing i'm here well i've got the kid i think that's the issue you know what i'm saying because people think it's done at marriage hold up does the cheetah ever want to eat again Period. Well, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the chase is cool, but right. you never eat if you never catch it. You never get nourishment if you ever never catch Ooh. it. This is, this is why oh, I'm you here. feel me? No, absolutely. This is why I'm here. I mean, it's okay to chase. <laughs> And I love that. But if you want nourishment, I if you want to live, if you want sustenance, yep. you gotta eat, brother. I love that. I love All right, that. okay. That's, I got. I, I'm, great. I'm passing to my uncle Troy. I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> uncle, uncle Troy. <laughs> uncle Troy, take us back. All right. Take us back. We're going down memory lane. Come on, Troy. <laughs> we're, good. Come we, on. we're going down memory lane. You know what I'm saying? Because we got some young brothers Let me just in. say, Troy's my boy. We've known each other since college. I know. I know. That's why this is so perfect. So, because you're going to be able to know if he bullshit. <laughs> like, like, Absolutely. So, <laughs> so we let's take us back to the beginning, right? Because mm-hmm. we some young brothers out here. We might all might have a young lady that we think is dope. You know what I'm saying? We enjoying that time. What made you pull the trigger when you first got married? <laughs> <laughs> well, I really pulled the trigger you before I got married. <laughs> no, pulling the trigger is why he got married. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about because <laughs> like because no. we gonna talk about the ter- change of time. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I, I think I think one thing that's really important though, um, and uh, uh, marriage is a topic that's. Uh, I mean, I don't think you could underestimate the importance of it, and uh, I think one of the things that's so important that we in the black community miss. Uh, you know, right now we're in the middle of this whole Black Lives Matter, uh, racial reconciliation and justice and whatnot. Uh, but I think one of the greatest impacts of slavery, one of the greatest vestiges of it that still remains today, is the destruction of the black family. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as Pastor Cal was saying a moment ago, uh, marriage, marriage serves as kind of a foundation uh, to the black family. 
And um, in addition to uh, having been in ministry for many years, I'm a lawyer. And I deal with black brothers all the time. Uh, and I have dealt with them uh, from capital murder, I mean, you, you name it, I've dealt with them, uh, drug dealers. Uh, the number one problem that I see, <laughs> and I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about theory, I'm not talking about uh, being cool and, and just out in the streets and whatnot, I'm just talking about real life. Because when a brother's facing life or he's facing death or his freedom is at stake, uh, you get to see him in the raw. I'm not talking about throwing gang signs and all that kind of stuff. You see him in the raw. And uh, I've had brothers lay their heads on my shoulder and cry. I'm talking about tough guys. I've seen guys uh, uh, just at, 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 the, at their bare bones uh, uh, realness and genuineness. And the thing that always stands out to me there's always a mama. Come on. I There's always a mama yeah. who will sell her house, her body. It doesn't make a difference for her kid. She will go to the ends of the earth. And in 27 and a half years, I can count on one hand the time there's been a daddy. That's it. On one hand. And uh, uh, when there's no father, a mother can give it everything she has. But she can't be a man. She can't teach a boy how to be a man. She can do her best, but she's not masculine. She doesn't have that. And 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 God intended that that, that man and that woman they come together and they they show that wholeness that reflects God. In the black community, slavery wiped that out for us. And I listen to brothers, or even the conversation that we're having, even though we're joking. Uh, these women need good men. Yeah. They need good men who are going to stay with them. And, you know, I, I've been I've been married more than once. Uh, How many times? And, uh, <coughs> I don't want to get in all my business. But, uh, <laughs> Dang. Uh, I've been married three times. and uh, uh, I think that's I, important, though, but because I, like, I you keep going back to it. So it's something I, there. I, I posted something not long ago, and it was amazing. Uh, because when I posted it, uh, I said, you know, in my family, I never saw divorce. I never saw divorce. I was the first person in my family that I ever saw get divorced. And that was after 15 years. And uh, I'm married to your aunt. And uh, people say, well, when did you know it wasn't going to work? I said, like, after, like, the first two or three days. But I stayed in it for 15 years because I never saw anybody get divorced. I never saw it. But I never saw a happy, a happy marriage in my family. I never saw a happy marriage. Mm -hmm. I saw cheating. I saw fighting. I saw all kinds of things. I was determined that no matter what, I would not get divorced. And 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 and, and, it, and it, it got to a situation where I felt it had to happen. But I will tell you, when I look back, I'll turn 59 tomorrow, and I look back as a young man, and I say, if I had to do it all over again, I would have stayed married for my kids. Mm. I wasn't happy in the marriage, but I saw what it did to my kids. I saw the yeah. impact. And all these years later, whether I'm talking about Jamal, I'm proud of him. He's very successful. But I see the impact. Uh, my oldest child, I see the impact. Divorce destroys kids. It does. And, um, and, and I, I've witnessed that. And, and so, my brothers, what I'm saying to you is for the sake of our children, uh, our women need us for the sake of our children because I think it's disgraceful. I mean, I think it is disgraceful. To have a child by a woman and not be there, uh, so, it, it, it kills our society. So, and, and I agree. Is it to have a child by a woman and not be there for that child, or have a child by that woman and not be there for that woman? Because I think we, I think we begin to cross pollinate conversations of fatherless children, yeah, and husbandless wives. You know what but, I'm saying? Women. Here, like, here's the thing, though. If if you have a child by that woman and you're not there for that woman, you're not there for that child. When I say I'm not there for that woman romantically, I'm there to make sure I will always make sure my child can have a a, a roof over his right. head. And I'll make sure my child always eats. And obviously you sure, are the sure, main sure. caregiver for my Absolutely. child. So you're going to eat too. So I'm there, <laughs> but why do I have to be there? 
Yeah. Well, no, let me let me cause let me ask this question because I, I understand I understand what Eldridge is saying, but that's that's really what this conversation is about, right? What? Times have changed, right? On top of, I know during those times coming up, yeah, you got somebody pregnant, you also had to get married. Nowadays, I've seen it where yeah, a brother might have a child on the way, but the woman will let you know we don't have to be together. Let's just co-parent. Let's just. Yeah, it's some women so, that just want kids. They so really want when we're talking about marriage, are you saying that marriage is a a sacrifice that men have to make? Because if that's the case, <laughs> you're not convincing <laughs> no, 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 you really think they meant to make the baby? Like, huh? sometimes you don't mean well, to hold make the baby. Hold up. Sometimes what? You don't mean to make the baby. I How mean, do you not mean? What, what, you, what can you do to prevent it? Man, a lot of brothers, hand-eye coordination ain't as good Oh, as there you go, please. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I don't there's don't a have whole no lot of ways to pre- prevent. <laughs> so, there's a whole lot of pre- – I mean, I, there are condoms, they, you know, whatever. I, I, some of y'all I, – I look, some brothers I know, they – they can't even pull out their driveway, much less, <laughs> you know. So, so I mean, so, all right. I mean, let's so, get real. So, all right, let's go here. Let's go here. Here's another thing. One thing I feel like sisters have different advantages on the marriage thing that we don't have. Like, all right. So, one thing that the sisters have, right? There's no culture of I got my ring that I do with my homeboys. Like my the sisters got. It's a level of excitement that women have when they about to get married that we just don't have. Like, oh, girl, look at this ring. Oh, girl, I, look I, at and, and I agree because on top of that, there's also a level of, oh, you got her pregnant? It's not a celebration. Let, like let me be real. Let me be real. So I'm, uh, and I'm saying this from an experience of I used to work for Lippman Jewelers. I was the top salesman at Lippman Jewelers. I have sold more engagement rings than I can count. And I used to remember the thought, the 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 money, the investment that brothers came in. I remember this one brother. I'll never forget this. This brother wanted to get this ring so bad because he was marrying into money. And he didn't have money. <laughs> but he wanted to prove himself <laughs> to the family. So this brother put the ring on. You ain't supposed to have the ring on layaway longer than like 30 days. Man, I kept this ring on layaway for like four months, five months. And I like family. I I worked it out where I gave this brother a veteran discount. I gave his brother a Labor Day discount. I gave him an employee. Like I'm talking, about, I did everything in my power to get this brother a ring. And I see brothers do that, right? But then the sisters come when they come to get the brother band. They're like, ah, I'll get that one. <laughs> like it's just like there's so many disadvantages. I just feel like it's just not. Get the tungsten. Well, like, even the, 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 the culture and tradition but, but you of know, weddings. But you know something? No, uh, uh, LG, the, it, it, it's a lesson, and, and it's one I wish I had learned when I was younger. Um, men and women process things differently. Mm-hmm. It don't mean one is better. It just means they process things differently. For us, if, if you think about it, with us, with most of us, a ring is no big deal. None. You know? With the woman, man, having a clean house is having yeah. a, or someone to nurture. They to they they process home. different, and, and what you got to do. I'm sorry, uh, that's our young <laughs> young resident fool. <laughs> no, 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 he he making sense though. But, but there's this guy, there's this guy, uh, this marriage guy. I forget his name. Um, but he talks about love languages. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And I know and, my and, love language. And these five different love languages. And Chapman. The fact that yeah, Chapman, Gary Chapman, yeah. And so just because just because you like it this way doesn't mean that's the way she processed. And I think that's something that's important to understand. For us, whether we have a ring or not, it's no big deal to us. For that woman, it's a huge deal. Yeah. Bro, whether we get married or not, not a big deal for us. I've never seen, like, when you go to your home, but, like, you get married, it's like, like, my brother just got married. Wait. Like, like I, I remember the conversation. Like, when my brother got married, he was like, I was like, everybody was like, bro, you sure? Like, that's what, that, that's like why brothers do that. Brothers be like, why? Bro, you sure you what do women? Married? What do women want? Do women want you to just, you know, be there? Or do they want to marry you? What do women want? They got destroyed in the race. And now we're 
No, nah, I think I think I think women want to be married. I think women want to be women married. Women want to be married. Yeah, right? I think marriage is a more I'm sign right? of security. Mar- Talk to any women. You do the same survey. For all y'all who who ain't married, survey women and ask them how many of them want to be married. Yeah, they want to be married. Do you want to be married? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent of women in the room want to be married. In the room, right? So then, if, if then that changes the story, though, because what you're saying is, hey, why should we get married? But you talk to these women, women like, but we want to get married. So then, it, it's not a matter of doing what they want; it's doing what you want. Yeah, right. You feel me? Right. So then now, so now you're not trying to fulfill her life; you're just trying to fulfill your life. Yeah, but but. but <laughs> So, but, but yeah, where, but like, where's the problem? Hey, you know. Did you say where's the problem with that? Well, because if she wants to get married. <laughs> he, he would have been married for 15 years unhappily. I'm not spending unhappily. Th- and, and that's what I was about to say. What about but let the, me, But let me, but let me, but let me, but, 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 but no, but here the, I feel you. But here's the deal. Hold on, let him, let him respond, let him respond. Hey, to my to my <laughs> listening audience and my audience that watch you, like as you can see, this is a passionate conversation, and I am pro marriage. I just want to put that out there. I'm not anti marriage, mm-hmm. but these are some great. Yeah, questions. yeah. But, but, yeah. You know, we're, gonna, we're gonna go to Pascal. Let, 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 let me interject something. Ahead, I think this ahead, is yeah. really important, um, and it's something that mm-hmm. guys really have to take to heart. And, and I'm not just telling you again theoretically. I'm telling you because I experience it. Mm-hmm. See. You brought up something earlier. You said you, you, you're a relatively good-looking guy. You, you got a job. You this and that. So why would I get married? Because what you're looking at is you look at the ratios. You know, there's so many black men that are in prison. There's so many black guys that are gay that it even ups the number of women that are <coughs> available to us. But, look, I'm much older than you. I don't look as good as you. But I got a lot more money than you. Oh! <laughs> but hold on. The flex. But hold on. Hey. I'm a, I'm a professional. Make it my bad, man. So, <laughs> so for whatever numbers you got, I can pull yours and mine. All right. Now, all right, now we're going to have to go there. All right. Now we're going to have to go there. But, but here, here's the point I'm trying to make. Well, yeah, the, but, point, the point I'm trying to make is this. Yeah. Is for me, I'm like, all right, I've had failed marriages. Why would I do it again? Because I got all this out here without being married. That same thing you're saying is, look, why am I going to kill what I already got? If you really start looking at it, it's kind of selfish. It's kind of selfish. Man, I, and, I, can, can and, <laughs> and, and, and think of what you're saying. You think about what you can get out of it. Uh, but it's not always just about you because if you take it that way, then you're taking advantage of somebody else. But, so, but that's, uh, that's I, I, that is the question, uh, yeah. though. That like, is the question. Because <laughs> go, 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 go. What, what, what do <laughs> Pascal? You've been you're, you're the only married man in here. How long have you been married? Oh, uh, twelve years. So, it's my second wh- marriage. Okay, I was married wh- once before. How long I, the first time? Um, fourteen years. Something like that, yeah. What, what? I, had to, I had to look at you. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, and that's how you know they boys. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were married to best friends. Yeah, yeah, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 we were. Tell us about <laughs> that. Because <laughs> like, that's the thing. What do men, what do we really get out of marriage per se? Like, I, I see the benefit of marriage for a woman. What is the benefit of a marriage for a man, a young man? I oh, get it when you older. Oh, my brother. Hear, hear, hear me. <laughs> the benefit for a marriage. For, for a young I, man. For, I don't care how old. For, for a young man who's ready. There's no, let me say, start with this. There's no benefit for uh, any man of any age to marry if he's not ready. Mm. And now, all right, now start right there because we like to okay. break down stuff all the way. Ready for what? If he's not ready for commitment. Okay. Mm. If he's not ready for responsibility okay. with another person, okay. if he's not ready to change, change himself. Okay. When you, you say change, I mean change who change his habits, change his 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 attitudes, change his his behavior. Mm. If you're not ready for that, then you're gonna get no benefit. So you believe you can change people? Oh heck yeah! No, he said change you. Change. Re- no, change no, I'm talking about you. Yeah, you can change you. 
So we well, may change her. No, I'm saying like you. It, it is acceptable for me to go into the marriage expecting her to change herself. No, 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 no. It's acceptable for you to go into that marriage expecting you to change you. She's both of you going to change in the marriage. That's a given. As the only evidence I don't think of that's life a given. is growth. I think is. that's a given for a good marriage. I don't think it's I'm, a given. I'm not asking. I'm telling you. The only evidence of life is growth. And growth is change. Yeah. Okay, okay. You understand what I'm saying? If you're not changing, you're dying. He been married twice. Let, so let me, if you're me, not changing, you're dead. Than me. You feel what I'm saying? Let, let me put it like this. Oh, let me say this. Mm-hmm. The only reason we're having this discussion is because, and the only reason men don't want to be married. Let's be real. Can we real? Can we want pussy? Don't nobody want to be locked down to the same vagina for the rest of their life. That's it. <laughs> and, and, and. A little bit more. Tell me more. Right. What more is it? Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let, we'll Wait, let, no, no, no. We're, we're, gonna, gonna, we're, gonna, let him, we're gonna let him get on the mic. Like we, this yeah, is we, young we, wisdom. Yeah, we normally keep him off the mic, but we're gonna let him get on the mic today. <laughs> he be on that shit. Right? No, no. I want to hear you. It's, it's gonna make plenty of sense. No, right? uh, go ahead. Go with it. The, the, I, I think the statement was because we, we, it's a plethora of vagina. Why get married? Nah, I'm, I'm a brother who I'm, I'm decent, right? I ain't the best looking, but I'm, I'm decent looking, right? Do right, right, yeah, yeah. I, I got a job. Uh-huh. I got. Few jobs, uh-huh. right? <laughs> right. I got my own car. I got my own pl- like. So I, I don't need a woman for anything. Everything for which I desire will be a desire. However, monogamy is something I desire. Why? Why do I desire monogamy? Yeah. Because in marriage, or if I'm going to make that big commitment, like my brother said, you know, buying this ring, she want me to protect, provide. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of the house. She ain't want. You want to live this this lifestyle of being a wife that people try to make such a bad stipulation, but isn't. Right. You know, like if you really want to live that life. Monogamy is something amongst other things that are non-negotiable for Absolutely. me. Absolutely, and I appreciate that. You get what I'm saying? So the plethora. Me too. Not, I, I I can I can come home to this one. I don't mind that, but I the loyalty is what I'm getting at. You get what right. I'm saying? So I have right. to be made assured that you know, hell, I can't keep it with me. It's with her. Right. If it were mine, she could leave it on the dresser before she Dude, walk out. The you, don't, you, don't even, you don't even know how much you don't know how much truth you're spitting because here's the thing. And that's what I ain't trying to be funny, but that's what that's what scared most of us right now. Right. Like, See, got, I'm gonna hurt. Like he he he, he hurt. He got trust issues. That's it. No, 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 no. It's, big, look, it's bigger you, than trust issues. It's just life. That's do saying, you realize bro, how I'm important not make it that is? Type of commitment for someone who's just right. What the hell? Do you realize how important it is, how beneficial it is to have somebody in your life, number one, who supports everything about you? Mm. Wait, Shout but, out so, to my up. mama. Somebody who got, yeah, but you, you ain't marrying your mama. <laughs> my, my aunt just so, said so, it. My, my aunt just you know said it. it's always a mama. Yeah, who supports everything <laughs> about you, who will tell you the truth about yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody who will uh, uh, go to bat for you. Mm-hmm. Right, somebody you can come home and they can share the most minute situations about you. They know you matter. Things that don't nobody else know about, they know about it. They know that you matter. Uh-huh. They know you fart in the bed. They know your feet stink. They know all this stuff and they love it and they accept it. Your mama don't. Your, that ain't your mama. <laughs> uh, my, my mama go to bed for me. But I, I, I say this. I say this because. Um, we're having a very candid conversation about marriage, and I appreciate it, right? Um, and during during this conversation, during this conversation, I'm, I'm gonna be candid about something too, right? Uh-oh. Now that I'm, now that I'm listening to it, I'm really trying to figure out outside of having a kid, because in my mind, there was only one time I was really close to getting married, and that was my daughter's mom, because. Like I told everybody, the transition of moving from college to Atlanta, it probably would have been easier under the security blanket of a marriage. That's how I view it, right? Right. But if I didn't have any kids, everything you just described, I can definitely find that. I I can find that. It It might not be a lifetime. But I can get that for at least a year or two from, 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 a, from, a, from a solid from a solid person and me and me and me More and her. Than a year if you and, get a year and, and her. And, and or, what happens when that relationship severs? I have to go to another person. And what happens to all that privacy and all that intimacy that you share? Bro, that's going to leak anyway. You know what? Like, you know what? And, and then that's, hold on. Hold on I want to know. But hold on. That segues me into my next question because I want you to answer that. How have you seen the change of society change the views on marriage? Because that privacy and intimacy is now all over the place. 
Like, that privacy and intimacy moment that I might do for you, I might set the whole house up full of flowers. That's a private, intimate moment as well, but now it's going to be posted. I'm about to say, like, can, can I go there? Can I go, go there? there? Because that's, I, that's feel like, go there. I feel like I feel like y'all got married back when the NBA didn't have no three points. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all did, y'all had y'all had less rules than we got. Now we got this devil called social yes. media. Nah, no, nah. No, no. We got this. I don't care what y'all say. There's a devil called social media. Well, what that, look, what do they have to do with marriage? Bruh, it has exists. everything. I'm on and social no, media. No, it, no, bro, you you survive. You adapted to social media, right? So you knew a time before it. You were yeah, Michael, you were Michael what, Jordan. Michael right. Jordan only survived because there was no social media. <laughs> right. And Michael Jordan was LeBron now. He would not survive. And that's what we're saying. We're dealing with women who we have no problem bro, being I'm committed about, like, and all of that, right? Bro, but if we, we don't change our Facebook status, once we get with it's her. It's not even that, bro. We got women that, like, back in the day, your woman only seen the women that were on TV. So that necessarily wasn't real. The women in, now nah, let me go. The women in the town or the city. Now your woman see this girl on in Dubai, this woman in Egypt, or oh, this woman driving this, this woman doing that. And it's so much comparison, right? Like the compare, bruh. You acting like that's a, like you looking at that like it's a bad thing, like like it's a good thing. I don't understand hey, the impact me, this let, has on yeah, marriage. Bro, yeah. it has an impact on the dating for well, us to get the marriage. Let, let, mm. Like social media okay. is killing us in the okay. dating well, game. Okay, it, it, that it I can get. That okay. I understand. Okay, there we go. But, let, there yeah, we go. That's why you ought to get married at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that, that was a great plug. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, th- there, there's a book. Uh, there's a book. It, it was the number one seller of the 20th century other than the Bible, uh, written by a guy named Stephen Covey. Uh, called oh, the seven, seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Yeah, and, it's sold uh, that many books. It's number one in the yeah, 20th century. I don't read that one. Uh, but the thing that he talks about, and, 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 and he really became a guru on this, is uh, the concept of, of principles, those seven habits of seven principles. And the thing that he talks about, principles don't change. Social media can come and go. The principles are the same. Uh, they're bedrock. Relationship principles are the same. They they, are. They're not going to change regardless of what. And, uh, and, and I think that one of the things that we have to learn, whether we're religious or non-religious, we got to learn to be principle-centered. And when you're principle centered, it's it's not the modality, you know. It's the principles that govern you, and uh, we need uh, individually to learn how to be principle centered. And uh, once we do that, uh, it's going to trump all of these other external modalities, exactly. Uh, social media and all of that. But but I, I will say this: uh, Calvin is probably uh, the closest friend I have, and uh, we've known each other. 40, 40, 40 plus years. Yeah. And uh, in all of our marriages, we've gone through them together. I've only had two. So. I've only had one more than you. <laughs> all of our marriages. But, uh, like, but, but here's the deal. Here they come say, you know, but, but, like, but, here, this. <laughs> but here's the deal. So we have seen each other at our highs and our lows. And I will tell you uh, the success that you see with him today. And I've told him this many times. I've told his wife this. Uh, I attribute a lot of it to his wife. Absolutely. And to his marriage. Absolutely. Uh, and I have I have lived with him long enough to see the impact of a good marriage. And uh, I, I mean, I'm proud of what he has done and, and all of that. Uh, but at the same time, I look at him. Sometimes, I, I don't say I'm envious or anything like that, but I wish I had a marriage and a relationship like that because they genuinely love each other and they push each other. They have bad times. I mean, there are times he calls me. I can't tell his wife what, what he's telling me. Well, everybody, you know? everybody gonna know now. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but what I'm saying is I call Keith like that. I've seen the impact of it. And, and, and most of my friends who are happily married are very successful people because you don't have the drama. You don't have all of this other external stuff. Uh, there's a certain structure and a stability that's there, and uh, uh, so when you start talking about what is what is it in it for you, marriage solves a lot of problems for a young man, and uh, the, uh, uh, the value. 
I, I don't think you can overestimate the value of it. That's, I, I, that's, I can, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. And, I, and I'm going to throw y'all a bone, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Keith. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> this, this, I want you to, because the other side of being married, too, especially as a young man, is are we ready, right? Mm-hmm. You said earlier you have to be ready. What are the um, – are there any material char- characteristics to being ready? Not just – I understand the emotional part, being ready to change. Like, do I got to have my bread, right? Yeah. What, what are some of the mm. material factors? That, should I marry broke? That, yeah, like answer some of that. Like, what should I should, marry with bad credit? Yeah. Should yeah. I marry without my own spot? Well, should I marry without a car? Should yeah. I marry – like – No, 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 yes, no, no. But no, I mean, no, 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 but for real, though. For real, for real. Hey, look, I'm going to play in the back of my head. Like, hold on. Like, which one? No, no. But I don't think I don't think you will ever be completely prepared. I'll give an example. So, Troy, Troy, thanks for that, man. For real. When, my, when I met my wife, all right, I had been single for like nine years, right? All right from, what type of from single? My first, like, single. Like, like you dating God single? Like, Am I dating God single? Like I you, never dated God. Well, you know, you dating myself single. And I was or dating you, women. Okay, I don't know. I, was I, dating I, I women. want to make sure. That and you, many of them. Yeah, okay, that, <laughs> I, that's what I want to make sure. I want to make was, sure. Like, I, I'm a real dude. I mean, what are you talking about, man? I wasn't sitting, I wasn't sitting around in my Bible. Yeah, sitting around and reading my Bible. What are you talking about? <laughs> what? I, was, I came out of a bad situation, and I'm like, hey, look. Hide your daughters, but it was ugly. No, Pastor Cal. No, I know, right? I know, I know, I know. But but when I met my wife, when I met my wife on a serious tip, when I met my wife, it was funny because I was literally between jobs. So I I, I had just left one job as dean of a school, and I was waiting for another job. So I literally was not working. I was doing like freelance stuff, but I was literally not not working. And I came to her straight up like that, and I said, "Look, right now I ain't got no job." That's my line. Hey, for real. And she was like, what do you mean? I said, now look, I'm not saying I ain't never had a job. And I'm not saying I don't have one lined up. But I'm saying, so the issue was, it wasn't not, it wasn't whether, it wasn't my current situation. It was my trend. She knew where I was going. Oh, so she my looked wa- at the data. Oh, come on now. My <laughs> wife actually ladies, had a very look at the data. She had a very promising. This is for the ladies, for real. My wife had a very promising career as a nurse uh, anesthetist. She was in school to do. This. She had gone back to school. She had been working as a nurse. She was going back to be a nurse anesthetist at Howard University. She was going to do this thing. We met. She dropped it. Mm. She dropped it. Because I had to move out of town to a job. I said, babe, we can commute. I'll be okay. We were not. We ain't got to get married right now. We can wait. We can commute. Oh, so y'all were dating? Yeah. Y'all were living together dating? No, no, no. We were not. Oh, I uh, had my place. She had her place. Okay, right. Okay, cool. Don't be trying to catch me. Uh, no, she had her place. <laughs> no, I'm just checking my, for the bro. I'm trying to make sure. I'm, I'm checking off at my point. Like, I got you. Do I need no, to I got you. No, I had my crib. She had her crib. But no, we were living apart. And she, she was. I said, she said, look, I'm going to leave the program and I'm going to move with you. I said, no, nah, because I, I didn't want that responsibility. Right. But she said, nope, I value this relationship more than I do this career. She mm-hmm. dropped it, and we moved. And when that happened, I said, you know what? I'll be real. All my female listeners right now, they ain't feeling that I shit. Said, yeah, I know. Uh, so uh, she I'm, I'm she sacrificed, like, major for me. But here's the thing on my side. When I saw that sacrifice, I said, I got to show up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Right. I got to show up. Ain't no two ways okay. about it. I got to show up. Okay. And from that point on, I said, I got you. Mm. And and so it it took that sacrifice on both sides, though. You understand yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I got you. So, I got you. And, and when you got that kind of support, and there's so many. My wife is not unusual. You know how many women out here will do that? How many women will do that if they know the man has got their back? If they know this man is going to take care of them, this man going to hold them down, this man going to respect their kids? Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, you, you, I can ask any woman that. 100% in the room. So <laughs> so the question is not about, you know, what benefit it is. Man, the what, question is what benefit is it not? Mm, okay. Mm. Look, and I, and I think you just hit the nail on the head. I think we have to teach uh, brothers to recognize the sacrifice. Man. Because you yeah. just said something there, and I'm thinking like, hmm. What what maybe had been sacrificed that maybe I didn't step up to, and that's mm. what causes the so turmoil. Absolutely. All right, so can we talk about this? Mm. Uh, recently, uh, Pastor John Gray uh, came out again. 
<laughs> he done got caught up again on some bullshit. Like, and you know, this brother, this brother, you know what I'm saying? I, I really hate it, but he's just not that smart. He does just like a lot of dumb stuff. So he done got caught again <laughs> cheating on his wife. Like, don't, don't look at me. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, talk to the brothers. Yeah, okay. Talk to the brothers oh, that God. are married right now. Yeah, man. Like, how do we avoid the infidelity, infidelity pitfalls, right? Oh, God. And how do you come back if you don't already did it? Yeah. Multiple times. You, <laughs> like, you look at, you're looking at me. Hey, you know look. what? Go ahead. You go ahead. I think there's another issue that's important in the John Gray situation. Uh, John Gray uh, was uh, actually at Lakewood. Uh, Right. I'm I'm from Houston, so I remember when he was at Lakewood. And uh, And that's uh, Olstein, right? Yeah, that's Olstein. This is my Bible. Okay. Uh, But I think one of the things you have to think about, and the Bible talks about it in terms of, of, of going into ministry, is there's a certain maturity level that you have to have. And uh, when you get thrown into situations, uh, John Gray uh, left as an assistant at at Lakewood uh, where, you know, he did preaching and made people laugh and that kind of thing. And they kind of set him up in this mega church. Yeah. Yeah. That he was obviously not prepared for this. you, You look at the infidelity, but he had other issues. Uh, uh, the church that he went to um, it starts with an R. I forget the name of it. Uh, but uh, it's in South Carolina. I can't think of the name. South of Carolina. It. There was another guy that had that church. That guy was relocating, I think, to California. Yeah. And so he facilitated Gray being able to come into that church. And uh, uh, not long ago, uh, the guy ended up evicting them. Uh, relentless church uh, yeah relentless relentless Relentless. well he ended up getting evicted because they were not paying uh, the lease what they were supposed to pay were relentless church yeah 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 the 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 main guy ended up uh, uh, evicting them and that was a major issue which showed you that gray was probably not prepared to go into that type of situation yeah. Just because you can preach and make people laugh and that kind of thing, that doesn't mean that you've prepared for it. There are certain things you got to do because when it comes to women and you're in ministry and you're in this powerful position and whatnot, there are a lot of women who they look at you kind of – there's vicarious type relationships that take place. A lot of guys can't take sure. that. And, uh, Sister uh, love the pastor, but And I think what ends up happening with Gray, at least from what I've seen, I'm not in his shoes, I'm not in his head, but at least from what, what I've seen – is that he was too immature in turn. I don't mean as a man, but for that type of leadership role over people, and it made him susceptible to a lot of this stuff because the things that you're seeing uh, in the first relationship issue that he had, uh, you know, the, the girlfriends down the hall from the wife, I mean, that, that's craziness. Uh, and now with this situation, he's bad-mouthing the wife to the girlfriend. Yeah. And uh, um, uh, I think he needs a lot of prayer. He needs a lot of a lot of help yeah. because this stuff is going to destroy him. It is. It is. And I, I, I don't. Want, I, I, the last thing that we want to do here, we we do want to pray for him because, especially his wife, because yeah. I mean she had a lot of grace after that first time. Yeah. She and is. then this time, it's like, you know. But back to your question, what makes a man do that? Or like, or how, how do you, do you avoid, avoid it? it? Like, we I know it make you do it. Like, like. Yeah. <laughs> Top Top Delicious make you yeah. do it. Oh, <laughs> this your brother right here. I mean, yeah, I, was, I was listening to him. I'm uh, telling y'all, he's dropping when, knowledge. Y'all need to give him respect. he was talking about, um, when he was talking about monogamy, I mean. He I, would I go thought, on Mary that first time. For, like, he would definitely go on Mary no, first And we would probably take him because he's a good looking guy. For, I think for a young guy, for a young guy to celebrate the quest for monogamy. I mean, I was listening to him. I was like, man, this is really deep. You didn't know we got listeners. You know, this is really deep. Um, but... But you got to put value on it. And, yeah. and what I was hearing from him, he put value on that, you know, and I think that's important. Yeah. And the thing is that, you know, also what you – th- I'm glad you said that because what you value, what you respect, you take care of. If you – like everybody here got cars, right? I don't know what kind of cars you got, but if you got – Something know, like 
Yeah, I mean, it's a decent car, right? You take care of it, right? Right. Because something you value, you're going to take care of. You're going to watch it. You're going to clean it. You're going to make sure that other people see it. You're going to take care of it, right? And it's the same in relationships. Once you value, learn to value and respect that woman, you're going to make sure that she's protected. You're going to make sure she's taken care of. The moment you lose value for anything, you start treating it less than it deserves. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to go no more. That right there just summed it up. Powerful. Next thing I got to know, Dr. Dre going through a divorce right now. Mm. Prenups, where we stand? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's another, that's another thing young brothers think about, right? Young brothers on the come uh, up, right? You Do, know. We doing our Prenups. thing. And, and, and not just him, Tracy Morgan as well. Tracy Morgan got into the car accident. I don't think he had one. That's what I'm saying. I don't yeah. think he had one. Well, huh? Yeah, See, but here's this, this Mr. Monogamy, right? He's like, he like <laughs> she gets nothing. <laughs> she gets nothing. Mr. Monogamy. <laughs> Mr. But, Monogamy. You know, <laughs> hey, hey, but, 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 and, and this is important for black folk. This is important for black folk. Because uh, it's not just prenups, but wheels. Black people very seldom have wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we like it when you die, your wheel. Not even state. life insurance, man. Yeah, because I mean, black right, people don't right. like to think about things that might be inevitable. Now, I will tell you. I would advise any guy. I love when brothers start talking slow. <laughs> I, would, I, would I would advise. <laughs> if you started with something. Now, if, if y'all both started with nothing, then I don't think a prenup is nearly as important. We got just the other podcast right here. We've been the whole year strong. Yeah, like she ain't getting half of this. <laughs> she ain't getting half of this. All these likes, these mics. But if you if you if if you start with something, you know I think it's advisable uh, to think that stuff out, and, and that prenup generally that's what it's for. Yeah. Uh, the Tracy Morgan situation, I, I was shocked when I found out he did not have a prenup. I mean, I'm like, dude, she that, won. That, that's not that's not smart. How long was he married? It wasn't that long. I think it was like five years. Yeah. 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 It wasn't she that won. long at all. And if you live in a state, if you live in a state like Texas, which is a, a community property state, it's mm -hmm. not that big a deal because it's very easy to determine who gets what. But if you live in a state that's not a community property state and you don't have a prenup, um, uh, you know, if I was marrying a woman who was accomplished, you know, like a friend of mine, uh, who was accomplished, <laughs> I would expect her to want a prenup. You know, I, I ain't signed no prenup. Why not? You're not signing one? Hell no. Why? Look, I, I if, I was, if I was meeting Why? somebody right to... now, I would have a prenup. Yeah, yeah, that's you. It eliminates I, a I lot of that. stuff, man. But why wouldn't you want sign one? Man, you love me like shit. We just gonna split all okay, this. Okay, okay, split the script. Let's say you making you you well into seven figures. All right, cool. All right, you met her at Chick Fil A. Okay. <laughs> You feel me? <laughs> As we tip it. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I, I bet you Oprah you got a free note. Come on now. Oh, see, Oprah, Oprah not getting married. Elvis, 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 Elvis. Would you would you want would you want a prenup if you if you were well into seven figures and she yeah. is coming, you know, wage wage earner? No, just because I met her chip last. If I met her <laughs> at Waffle been, House, you know I don't want to talk to you. Right now. I don't want to talk to you. Right you now. can't so, ask me. <laughs> I ain't gonna talk to you. Right hey, look, now. Right, Chick Fil A so, should get props. So, right. so let's go to this. Let's yeah. go here though. Keep just saying something. Perfect example. I think Stedman living the best life. I don't get to talk on this podcast, um, but Oprah got all this money. Stedman chilling. Have you talked to Stedman? I tweeted him a few times. He don't be tweeting back. <laughs> <laughs> like, but <laughs> I will. I will say, Stepman was on uh, Karen Hunter's show. You know, I listen to Karen Hunter's show. Yeah. And when yeah, Stepman was cool. on, yeah, see, yeah, yeah, I love him. And when Stepman was on there, he said that you know they have a balanced relationship right now. You know what I mean? Like he has his own thing, his own money. She has her own thing, her own money, and he's still, even though she's Oprah, he's still able to be the man, quote unquote, in the relationship. Like when they go, I think he said uh, they went puppy shopping. Of course, it's Oprah. She could buy three puppies. But Stem is like, no, 
You're not gonna take care of all three. Mm-hmm. Just get these two. Okay, Stanley. You know what I'm saying? Putting their foot there. Now, but they're not married, and I think a lot of is times, that a bad life? Yeah, when we when we have this conversation, it's not. It's always now. You ask me if I'm talking to Stedman, like it's a bad life. Is that a bad? No, life? I don't know if it's a good life or bad life. You know what? That's Oprah and Stedman. Whatever works for them works for them. You know, I'm not gonna say they should get married. Yeah, you know, look, that that's up to them. I, that's above my pay grade to judge them. <laughs> okay, okay, you know, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. So, um, I will tell y'all what I've learned today. I've learned that I'm probably being selfish right now. I'm probably being selfish, but I also have been practicing self care. You know what I'm saying? Because like, I feel like brothers don't practice that enough. Brothers don't. What, what what is that? So, exactly. So we don't even know what it is because we don't <laughs> practice it. Because self care is what sisters do. You know, it's take care of yourself. It's like making sure you're good. You know what I'm saying? Making sure you are in tune with yourself and what you need at the moment. So for me, I have just been in this moment where I'm like, you know what? See Pascal looking at me like, <laughs> like, like. <laughs> Like, what bro, what? About, why man? do brothers get judged for wanting to take glasses off? That's BS. Take the glasses off. Look, you, do on the you do that on the show. You do that on the show when he take the glasses off. Take the glasses off. He's calling your BS out. <laughs> hey, look, shout out to Deanna and Porter. They watched the uh, show. If it, they said to tell you they love when you take your glasses oh, off. Because they know you about to get into it. I wasn't even thinking about my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, I think you, that's his thing. You about to get into it. <laughs> All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, like, <laughs> brother, like, I just, I just feel like it. I'm gonna be real. I do feel like brothers get demonized for living a single life, right? And when I say single life, dating multiple women, everybody know of each other. They might not be best friends, but you know, you're not the only woman. But brothers get demonized as soon as that sister catches feelings and wants more, and he don't. Yeah. Yeah, you get demonized. But we don't. But if we flip the script, if we get catch feelings and want more, you're a stalker. You're tripping. You're thirsty. Has that that ever happened to you? It's me. (laughs) It's it's me. It's me. It's never happened to me. But I'm serious. Look, my my oldest son is he's in a relationship, but he's not he's not married. When he turned came came into his uh, late twenties, right? He's thirty three now. When he got into his late twenties, I told him, I said, "Now the women you date now, at this age, it's going to be different." Mm-hmm. I said, "You okay? You kicking at 20, 21, 22, 20, 25, 20. You good? You kicking? Y'all oh, have fun? He he ha!" I said, "Once you get to them late twenties and those marrying years, women are not dating you just to kick it. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody trying to Netflix and nothing." Mm. I and I told him I said everybody you date, even if they lie, even if look a lot of times <clears throat> I can't speak for women. <clears throat> I I have go I don't have those DNA to have that DNA, yeah. but what I can say is that sometimes women quite often will say what you want to hear, so they're not hurt. Mm. Mm. That would be so right they'll there. say, well, you know what. No, it's okay. No, we can just hang out. We can just hang out in the back of their minds. That's why he's here, man. In the back of their minds, they're like, you know what? I really wish this was something more. Mm. I really wish he would be serious. And the moment you become serious, they end. Because people want relationships. And women tend to mature more than we do. They know what they want much quicker than we do. Hey, man, I I appreciate that, man. Hey. Hey, hey, I'm going to get that down, man. How old are you guys? I'm I'm 30. 33. Oh, shoot. Yeah. 27. 26. Yeah. You see, I might have kids, y'all, your age and your age. I mean. So, once I wish. Mean, well, he did say yeah, something because I, I, you did broke I, I kind of wish coming into my 30s, <clears throat> somebody would have explained that to me. Like, I wish look. I would have listened to this podcast. Exactly. Coming into my 30s. <laughs> because coming into my 30s, it did kind of just switch up on me. Like, I was man, having I fun. Like, so serious. And now it's <laughs> like. Women ain't trying I, to have I, fun 30 dating, years old. Dating with the purpose. That's the first time I heard that term. Yeah. Dating with the purpose? What you mean? <laughs> the purpose is to be get cuffed. Hey, you know, I, I think that highlights something else that's really important, too, and it's something that every one of us can do. Uh, I think we talk about this a lot. Um, when you can have a mentor, somebody who has gone through it, Yep. and... Uh, just somebody to lean on. Right. 
then a lot of the questions that you guys have uh, can be answered uh, through that mentor. And every one of us, uh, every one of you uh, in, in your age, uh, as you are uh, confronting this whole marriage issue and whatnot, I mean, I hope and pray that you all will uh, mentor some more black brothers uh, so Absolutely. that they'll know where to go. And I, I appreciate you for saying that because if you listen to this podcast, you know, people know I'm very serious about mentorship. But I have mentors of business. I have mentors on my activism. I have mentoring, like, on a lot of areas. I don't have a relationship mentor, and I think it reflects in my relationships. Like what you said earlier, we haven't really seen that. We don't see a lot of fun, successful, dope-looking marriages. Wow. Yeah. We do. I know, I know a couple. Of, I know a couple. Know, like, let me, so let, me be, let me be real. It's I know rare, a couple. You know. Of, let me be real. I know a couple of, like, they're good marriages, but at the same time, I don't think you, like, I don't think he like no player like I was a player. So I don't think the conversion is the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think he just had, like, I think. Look, I got a great marriage. I ain't going to talk about my player days. Don't ask Troy. But my, I have a great <laughs> marriage. And you can make that transition. Yeah. yeah. That tra- you can make that transition. And you can be monogamous. You can have one woman. When that woman is like, she, I ain't talking about just nobody behind you. I mean, when she locked into you, mm. ain't nothing like it, man. I'm yeah. telling you, there's nothing like it in the world. Okay. Hey, that's good, Trevor. Not but, behind you, locked in. Y'all, yeah, I'm y'all behind, no, I'm that. talking right here. Pascal just convinced me, and my Uncle Trey, I'm getting married again. Again? again? <laughs> no, like I said, I wasn't going to get married, but now I'm getting married. Oh, <laughs> so, yo, oh, 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 oh <laughs> you're making the decision again. Yeah, I was like, when, when did this happen? Like, uh, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, you, it almost why happened, you though. secrets? I ain't going to lie, it almost happened. That's all, that's all. Yeah, it, I, it, it was one shorter that took me there. I was, I was about to marry her. What made her different? Mm. What? You opened the door. Mm. I did. Let's walk through it. Um, this one shorter, I think, man, she was saying everything. Like, if speaking was singing, she was in perfect pitch. Mm. Like, I'm talking about her mouthpiece. Took me on a whole nother level, right? And then her actions, based off the opportunity where it kind of lined up, she was doing that too. So I act, her mouthpiece, her action lined up, and then it was where I was at. I was at that time where, like, I wasn't frustrated. I wasn't like, "Fuck all this. I'm just gonna be me. I'm doing me." I was. She caught me in a perfect window where I was like, I probably watched a good love movie or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I was just in there. Y'all know how it is. We get in that mood. You don't went to no weddings, or you got a homeboy with a good marriage, and he be like, "Man, you know what? I could, I could." So she was ready. Uh, not that's why I didn't go to her because she wasn't ready. Like she was talking ready, and it just, I think we were rushing it too fast. I think she was talking good, and I was resistant. But when she convinced me, and I jumped in, I think that scared her. Like, oh, hold on, you want it right now? Because I was like, shut up. I was gonna go to the courthouse. I'm talking. About, I was on some like love at first sight. I, I was. I was giving her the real like. Oh, what's up? We gonna do this? I've been hearing what you saying. I wasn't there. Now I'm there. Let's do this. Then shot hit there. Ah! Hold on. We ain't there yet. See, that, that's why I think you scared to go on married at first sight because you really would be married. Like I could go on married at first sight. I could. I was watching the show. I could actually do it. I the only thing I got to get over. Is y'all said something on there? Y'all like we're not here for uh, marriage first infatuation. It's nah. uh, it's, it's marriage. Right, it's not infatuation right. at it's first a real sight. Deal. It's marriage. So you know, I would just have to get over. Hopefully, they align me up with like physically wise. Like, I, and I can admit, like we all gotta get over that. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> gotta get over what? Like, like you want to be attracted to the person, right? Physically, for the most part, they they be. But that's what I'm saying. The shows that would be the only fear. <laughs> That'd be the best like, part of the show to me is when they be matching the dude and the family come out and they see the dude first. <laughs> when the family be like, mm, mm, this ain't gonna that's work. How you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know. Look, look. So for the for, for the most part, the show be like be like attractive, right? It's right, like right, the right. people do be like attractive people. So like, I could do the show. I would I do it? Probably not, but I could do it. You know what's funny because when I just talking about the show for a second, the women, it's like we we've had over seventy thousand people apply to be married at first sight, 
Mm. You know, since we started from since season one, we've had over seventy thousand people. Woo! And the funny thing, and that and that lets you know something. We have probably our viewership is probably about thirty four percent black, or maybe maybe even more than that now. But it's about over a third black people, and most of those are black women. Mm. The majority is black women. Black women are a huge viewership chunk, and whenever we talk to black women. These I, I have never yet seen a black woman that I've talked to, or maybe a couple, but generally, black women are ready for marriage. Mm. These women, they are ready for marriage. They're looking for a good man. And I hear all these brothers say, well, where the good women at? Where the good women at? We have all these incredible women. Then I find women, they're like, where the brothers at? We do get some good men. It's like, well, how come y'all can't find each other? Mm. And I, social media. Yeah, it, I, I, I just think social we, media makes I, relationships disposable. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know? I, I, it does, and I think we just got a lot of in the dating world. There's a lot yeah. of fake booby traps that we just need to. I didn't know and, what you were show. To say. And, <laughs> fake booby. Yeah, no, I just, oh, but oh. in the show, in the show, will show you that too, because folks will meet each other and they be, like, oh, I think we met before. Yeah, and you be like, well, damn, how y'all meet before y'all? <laughs> and, and I think also too. Let me let me just say this. Uh, you hear this a lot. I'm going to get out the way and I'm going to let the professionals help me do it. I'm mm-hmm. going to get out the way and I'm going to let the experts help me do it. You hear that, right? right? So it's a sense of y'all are the endorser for this person I'm about to date. That endorsement is very key. Yeah, Like you had that one endorsement that you trust. That It's like if I date a chick and all of my siblings like her, not even my parents. Yeah. Cause my siblings gonna be like raw. Like if all of my siblings like right. you, but now there's a reason for that though, Eldridge. People don't know this behind the scenes. We have like about three or four months that we vetting people before we put them together. Mm. So we've done background checks. We've done psychological evaluations. They've sat with psychologists. These people have gone through a lot. We've met some of the family members. We so by the time you meet somebody and we yeah. actually put you together, you are compatible. There are things that you actually have in common that there, you should get along right away because you don't have to worry about whether or not you like this and I like that or yeah and all that stuff. These are people who we've actually done hours and hours. They start with a 75 question questionnaire. Then they end up by the time after they get to that I stage. I did look at the application. It was too long. Yeah, exactly. That's really why I, only, I, 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 I remember exactly. now. Exactly. I did look it at the application. 75 questions. It, it was Most like, people drop it, off at that point. It was super it was long. Too long. And then you got to do about a 500 question questionnaire after that. Because we need to find out. We look at your ex-girlfriends, ex-boyfriends. Ooh, we I'm look at trouble. pictures. And Ooh. then we match you. Oh. So if you come say, yeah, I want... I want to. Oh, I want somebody fine. And I look at your exes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you need to shut up. I'm gonna get you somebody who look like your ex. Oh, that explains so much watching the show. <laughs> and then you gonna act. Then you gonna act like, oh, I, she ain't fine. Man, I done seen who you been dating. <laughs> what, you, what you talking Man, about? That is hilarious, that is hilarious bro. <laughs> hey, you know what? Keep uh, it, like, cause it's about that time. It's about that time. Yeah. Like I really could. I'm just enjoying it now. I can really just keep it going. I mean, now, now, um, I, I, I see it. I get it. And, Cause see, my dad is. I, I, I think it's a generational thing. I'm trying to figure out how it changed and when it changed. We'll probably dive into that in another podcast. But my dad is the same way. This is his second marriage. Mm-hmm. And he told me if he was to get a divorce now, he's getting married again at 58. So it's mm-hmm. like, you know, he. <laughs> They, they, you know, and he showed me how oh, man, man. Go, <laughs> like, like, like having a good job. Got to get another one. Get... <laughs> <laughs> so I see it, but I think the biggest thing that you said was uh, the responsibility thing. Oh man, like, so it's a big deal. Yeah. We gonna do it like this, man. Like uh, <laughs> I'm gonna give you opportunity, man, to the young brothers, man. Your last words, your last piece. You know why we should change the culture, the narrative of. How we looking at marriage as black men? Well, I mean, our society depends on it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you, you talked earlier about social media and some of the changing modalities, uh, but the principle holds true. Um, since slavery, uh, that's something that we lost, and uh, it affects us in every aspect of our existence. I read an article a few years back uh, in Ebony Magazine. And it talked about uh, if uh, if we don't do something about the black male crisis, 
that we're going to become a perpetual underclass. And um, I'm going to tell you, I see it every day. Um, it ain't about the white man. Nope. It ain't about all of this other stuff. It's about us picking up these boys and showing them a better way. Uh, and uh, our women, our daughters, our sisters, uh, they need us to help build up black men. Uh, because the family is the foundation of any successful society. And so I think it, it's incumbent on all of us, uh, and especially you guys as, as young brothers who are going to hold it down when we're gone, uh, to become the very best person that you can be um, in every aspect so that uh, when, when you hook up with a, with, with a woman, that you are a gift to her. You're a blessing to her and not a curse. And too many of our brothers right now are a curse to our women uh, and to our society. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, deep, uh, heavy. Yeah. Pastor Cal? Well, I, the reason you, I, I believe that you should rethink the way you look at marriage is because, I mean, Troy said just so much that I agree with, that um, if if we're going to have a stable society, a stable black society going forward, then that's where it starts. If we're going to have kids who are successful, kids who have a clear vision of success and a clear vision of successful relationships, it starts in marriage. I believe that it, it's really easy to to foster uh, you know disposable relationships, but it does come down to whether or not. You want to just depend on whether you want to depend on your brain or you're going to depend on your your your, your, your loins. You, you know what I'm saying? Because right, right, right. at the end of the day, man, if we if we don't build our community and build it through marrying and stop and stop thinking that she got to be this, she got to be that. You know, it's all about romanticism. It's all about feeling. It's all about, no marry. This let me let me drop this on you. Arranged marriages are about 70% of the marriages in the world, roughly. You know, about 70, 75% of the marriages in the world are arranged. Mm -hmm. Of those arranged marriages, roughly about 90% stay married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's because they're doing more than just marrying romantically. They understand that they're bringing cultures together. They're bringing legacies together. They're coming together to, to create something. And not, oh, dang, she fine. Oh, yeah, she fine. I want to wear her. No, no, it ain't even about that. It's about can you come together with this woman, be attracted to her. Because remember, the arranged marriages, they come together first, have the commitment, and then they grow in love. I don't believe in falling in love. I've never believed in it. It does not exist. Anytime you fall, you get hurt. Anytime you fall, you have no control over it. If you're going to grow in love, you're going to actively make a decision to fulfill another person's needs you're going to stick to that decision like you stick to your relationship with your mother like you stick to your relationship with your job you're going to stick to that decision and you're going to grow that relationship you're going to create a legacy that your kids can come up in where their default is not poverty mm. their default is not unsuccess their default is not that hey well you know what i'm just going i'm gonna, I'm gonna sling rock that's not their default their default is success the default is I'm going to be married for the next 50 years. That's the default. That's what we need to build as a community. We need to change what our default is. Damn. Jeez. That brother. I'm over here like, damn, I might have to. <laughs> I might be thinking about it now. Mark said he sold. <laughs> hey, right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with everything except committing to the job. You know, I quit a job in a minute. So, <laughs> so, so I agree with everything he said. So that was, <laughs> uh, I got to speak to my young brothers. You know what I'm saying? These, we have our wise sage on, on the podcast. But I want to speak to the young brothers, man. I had this conversation for us because we are growing up in a culture, an environment, and a community that looks a little different than they had to grow up in. So we're growing up in the era of where we are protecting ourselves from city girls, hot girls. You know what I'm saying? We're protecting ourselves from the culture that hip-hop is pushing on our women. 
You know what I'm saying? We're protecting ourselves from that. Whether we admit it or not, we listen to it, we vibe with it, but that does put a hesitation in your step as it pertains to me building my legacy and building with that. My advice to the brothers, based off what I heard here, we have to do a better job at going below the surface, diving deeper in our interaction with our women, deeper than the sexual interaction, you know what I'm saying? Deeper than, oh, we just having a good time, fun, Really, if you're not having sex, if you're not just having fun, why would you be here with this woman? Mm. And if you can't answer that conversation, if you can't answer that question, maybe, just maybe, you're not ready for this grown man shit we talking about on this podcast. (laughs) With that being said, I say it every week. I love y'all. I need y'all. But most importantly, I can't wait to see y'all next week. Y'all, let's get married. (laughs) 